And now my nails are proud to be American. If you're offended by this video. Uh oh. I don't wanna know what she says next. <laughs> So, hello everyone, it's me, Christine, again. 2020 has been a complete dumpster fire year, and the internet has been a pretty depressing place lately. Coronavirus, murder hornets, police brutality, Donald Trump, JK Rowling. We would control Z it all if we could, wouldn't we? <laughs> Sometimes it feels like the world is falling apart, I think it's important to remember the few things in life that maybe are worth celebrating. Like maybe your pets are really happy that you've been home for months. Maybe you showered this week. Maybe you just painted your nails with rainbow nail polish. Or maybe you're celebrating the fact that the US Supreme Court recently ruled that employers cannot discriminate against employees on the basis of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. This recent news reminded me of a video of mine from five years ago. One of the first times actually that I ever showed this face on my channel was when I did American themed pride nail art in celebration of the US finally legalizing same sex marriage. I recently tweeted out those nails kind of just going down memory lane and then a bunch of you suggested that I should recreate them since it's been so long now and I have my own rainbow hollows I could use this time. So I thought today, five years later, it would be fun to rewatch my old video, reflect on the times, react to my cringy face, and also recreate my American Pride themed nail art. We're gonna see if Simply still got it. American Pride nails and my gay kitten. What a nice, what was that supposed to be, clickbait? One thing stayed consistent is my copyright free intro song. It's the 4th of July or whatever coming up, so how about American Pride flag nails? Why am I so angry? <laughs> Seems like you're really angry, Christine. Is everything okay? Because America just legalized gay marriage in all states. Oh my god, Simply Nail Logical has a face. This was my first real face video. You can tell by my awkward cringiness. America! <laughs> yeah! Gonna be a homosexual nation! Ah! That was a big movie then. <laughs> Anyways. Meanwhile, Canadians are like, finally, eh? We did that like 10 years ago. Now pass the maple syrup. Full of comedic stereotypes, Christine. How do you do an Australian accent? No, don't even try. Just. Hey mate, it's in Australia. It's your turn next. Stop! <laughs> if you think my American pride flag males are corrupting your nation's symbol or whatever, it's nail art, calm down. It's nail art, calm down. It's nail art, calm down. Ooh, simply mad. Here's the rainbow gay pride flag. I test painted the order of the polishes on paper first. You'll see why. What's all these random symbols and scribbles, you ask? Nail art code I'll never tell. <laughs> Basically, I'm just messy. I'm making six different colors of stripes on my nail, but I'm gonna start- Yeah, how did I do this? You'll see I should pay attention. Later, I promise. Don't worry about straight lines for now. Just don't worry about straight lines. I didn't even realize that when I said this, but then all the comments I remember saying like, don't worry about straight lines because we gay. <laughs> Anyways, you guys are funny. Nail vinyls next. The Let cat it clock. For 15 to 20 minutes. I'm a still user. Take the first one and cover up a straight perfect ah. line of purple. And then again over the green. That's how and you do it. And then again over the orange. So now we're gonna take our red polish and paint it towards the base of the cuticle. Red polish. I used to think about these things. Devil. Then start peeling off the vinyls to reveal a beautiful seamless rainbow. Cool. You can gently scrape off any dangling bastards with a toothpick. Add another quick dry taco. And if you're gonna comment below, that's so many tacos. Good for you, you made an observation. <laughs> I can actually paint. I really don't know how they do it. I have no idea how all those French nail bloggers paint tiny, tiny objects on their hands. It's true. They just look like dying white starfish. Or starfish that are in the middle of throwing up. Blah, I'm gonna <laughs> throw up on you. What? If you're offended by this video because you're anti-gay rights, take that stick out of your ass and go kiss a girl because you'll like it. Unless you're a boy watching this video. Then go kiss a boy? I welcome the male species to watch my videos, but I always assumed it was girls until I saw this. 
86% of you are male. YouTube knows what you're doing, male species. All right, male species. <laughs> Looks like there's around 10% of you now, though. You've increased. That's great news. The sad thing about this awesome hollow nail tutorial is that among the supportive wanna, comments, wanna there's likely something? to be some anti-gay crap. If you don't yeah. support gay marriage, then you don't have to marry someone of the same sex. God. Simply obvious. The world is not ending. It's just changing. Get over yourselves and lighten up. Let people love whoever the hell they want. If you're still going to be an ignorant asshole and leave some stupid comment below, please remember to leave your address of where you live so I can come to your house and make out with you and then marry you. That was a joke. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't cheat on Menchie. Oh, Menchie, my little gay kitty. Love you. The only thing weird about this is that I'm your mother. That was also a joke. If you were offended in any way by this video and you support the LGBT community, I do want you to know that I truly did not mean to offend gay rights at all. And I hope that you can all see that I was just using humor to make anti-gay rights people uncomfortable. <laughs> I just wanted to make the haters uncomfortable. That, that's my disclaimer. Good one. If you were offended in any way by this video because you're anti-gay rights, then too bad. <laughs> you cannot be saved. Oh my god. Okay. Um, Thanks so much for watching, guys. And remember, love is love. I love all creatures of this land. Wow. Well. <clears throat> oh, that was a trip down simply memory lane. I have lots of thoughts and feelings and uh, self-reflection after watching that video. <laughs> you know, whenever I watch my old content, I find it pretty cringy. I think it's clear, not just in that video, but in a lot of videos around that time, that I was trying to be some sort of internet persona. And sometimes it definitely reads as I'm not really being myself and more just looking like I'm trying to be Jenna Marbles or Grace Helbig, who were and still are my inspirations, honestly. So that does kind of rub off on you a little. I think a lot of my early content was based on impressions. Sometimes I would do these really bad American accents with like a twang and attempt to sound like the stereotypical dumb American. And other times I'd do a really cringy like British high tea time accent. And I also just said weird shit I thought was funny, like, my gay kitten or America, the homosexual nation? My sense of humor has definitely changed. I definitely make a lot of jokes in older videos that I wouldn't make today. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Just not everyone was filming this whole time. But I hope you know me well enough by now to know that if you're ever watching any of my older videos and you hear me say something that you might have found offensive, it was not ever my intent to be disrespectful. And if anything, it's just coming from a place of ignorance and cringy bad humor. Now the comments on this video were very mixed and I remember this very clearly because it was the first time in my history of YouTube that I had such a polarizing comment section and I don't think of my channel much as a, you know, a controversial channel. I didn't even really see this as a political issue. Now obviously when I made the video it was clear that I anticipated some backlash but I even suggested in the video that anyone who disagreed with me was just kind of an idiot. I don't think I was actually prepared for the amount of negativity that I got for doing this video. I just like did not expect it to that degree. It wasn't all negative, of course. There was some positive comments with a lot of people very happy, almost grateful that I was making this video, almost saying things like thank you to me, which I was not expecting. That's not why I made the video. And then there was a lot of comments about how gay marriage should not be legalized and that Canada was whack for doing it first and that I shouldn't be promoting this kind of immoral behavior and that y'all need Jesus. I'm not gonna show those comments on screen because they are not valid here. But hey, you know what? Maybe the people who posted them have changed their views in the past five years or at least changed how they would treat strangers on the internet. We can only hope and pray. To this day, I'm just still shocked that something like gay marriage or basic rights for LGBTQ people at your place of employment or anything really just involving the right to live your damn life without being discriminated against on the basis of your sexual orientation, gender identity, your race or ethnicity, or just anything that still divides people so much. I just, I don't understand it. Why do people do that? <laughs> Stop it. So the context for this video or me in this video saying this to you is that yes, I'm a white straight girl who lives in a very liberal city in Canada. That's Ottawa, it's the capital of Canada. And I don't know one person, not in my family, not at work, not someone like a family friend or an acquaintance 
who is against gay marriage or <laughs> basic human rights. I've just never seen those people in real life or spoken to them or had a conversation with them. So it's almost like I just don't see them as real people. I just like hear about them on the internet or see them on the news, which is ignorant. But then that turned out being good because it ended up being a really good lesson for me to like learn and actually see that these shitty people existed in the world. It just helped me gain just a tiny bit of a sense of how difficult and how different things were for other people in different parts of the world. So that was important in my personal learning journey. After that, I really did appreciate on a deeper level um, some of the hardships that others have spoken about. Whereas before I was just kind of like, Everyone's fine around me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean like, thank you to the, to the negative commenters for bringing that to my attention five years ago. I th I've thought very deeply about that since. <clears throat> All right, I thought we're doing a nail tutorial here, Christine. Okay, we will, we're gonna do that in, in a minute. Another theme in the comments of that video was people making jokes about being a holosexual. Like some of you may remember, I used to call my subscribers holosexuals. Holo as in holographic, which I love. The term actually started after one of my subscribers said that they were a holosexual on one of my early videos. I think it might've been that American Pride nail art video. And after that, I said holosexual in a video once and everyone just kind of started referring to themselves as holosexual and I just kind of went with it. I think most people like me at the time thought it was an innocent joke, you're sexually attracted to holographic glitter, which obviously isn't true. Like we're not actually, you know what I mean? But it was just funny to express our passion for hollow that way. But I remember as time went on, uh, a couple people did comment that they were offended by, I think in one video, I specifically said the line, like I'm coming out as holosexual and I should have never have put it that way. I realize now that's not funny because it makes light of the hardships and difficulties of what it's actually like to come out as a member of the LGBTQ plus community to the, your friends or family. So it's been a few years and I've stopped making jokes like that. And maybe this is a good example that if you personally find something that someone does on the internet offensive, it's more helpful to that person and just society in general if you educate them on why something is offensive rather than just like try and cancel them or yell at them or get mad at them without like truly trying to help them understand. We might actually help people change for the better. We're all just out here trying to be good people with good hearts, with good intentions. Now, let's do some nail art because I would like to offend some more anti-gay Americans. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome back. It's 2020, simply speaking, in this voiceover now. First, sadly, we gotta get rid of my existing new Rainbow Hollow Taco Collection gradient nail art, which I am so sad about because I just love it so much. I've kept it on for over two weeks now, but it's time to go and replace it with another Rainbow Manny. Look at that nail growth. Look at that sexy nail gap. Since I used a long lasting base coat under this gradient, I'll be removing it the usual way with nail polish remover. So I always like to oil up my cuticles first so that the acetone is less drying on my skin. And don't mind me wearing gloves to protect my other hand, which is a fun hollow taco combo using magenta jelly, Aurora unicorn skin, and flaky hollow taco because I want it all on my nails at once. All right, stop getting distracted now. Remove that rainbow. Ooh, tie-dye cotton pad. All right, okay, we clean. And now we're just gonna do a tiny bit of gentle cuticle pushing since it's been so long since I've changed my polish. This helps nail polish stick better to the nail plate when you get rid of the tiny thin layers of skin that grow up the nail. A quick sad file because my nails are still growing back to their usual length, so I'm skipping filing the tips, but the sides do grow a little wonky unless I smooth them out just a tad, so I'm just using my Hollow Taco glass nail file. Okay, I've rinsed my nails and now they're ready for long lasting base coat, which I'm using here instead of my usual peely base because we will be working with nail vinyls today and I don't want the nail vinyl work to pull up the peely base. I planned out my rainbow stripe methods again like a freak on paper and decided on six shades to use because that is the number that will fit properly on my nail length right now and the same as I did five years ago. I am taking some creative liberty here, although I do acknowledge there are multiple iterations of the pride flag, including more recent ones that aim to capture inclusivity. Starting off with the lightest shade in the rainbow, yellow, lemon sucker as a base. As a general rule, when layering, I like to put the lightest colors on the bottom to save the darker ones for the top layer as they generally cover better. 
Wow, I always miss this side of the nail when I'm filming because I can't see it. Now I'm applying my protective peel around my nail so I can clean up the next mess we're gonna make. Now let that dry. And now for the confusing part. We're gonna messily apply three shades roughly in a stripe across the nail and not worry too much about them being straight, but just that they cover enough surface area for where that color section of the stripe needs to end up. This should make more sense in the next step when you see it all come together. Don't forget on the last stripe on the tip of the nail to wrap the polish under the nail. This will help prevent tip wear and chipping. And now we're gonna peel off the mess. And again. And again. I did end up with some orange drink in my cuticles. Oops, sorry, I spilled my breakfast juice. But no worries, just grab a cleanup brush dipped in acetone and brush it right out of there. Cause it's time to go to school. Now before we add nail vinyls, it is absolutely necessary to add a nasty coat of glass of taco to make sure the polish gets properly sealed in and is fully dry first. Now I personally wait about an hour before moving on to the nail vinyl section. I know that sounds like a long time to wait, but we need to be on the safe side only because we are working with essentially a sticker that is a risk to peeling up the base design, which we absolutely do not want to do. So once the glassy taco is completely dry, we're gonna grab some striped nail vinyls and place three of them evenly over each of the striped colors we've already laid down on the nail. Make sure they're also nice and stuck down well to the nail to avoid nail polish seepage. I also like to make a crease in the vinyls along the side of the nail with a metal cuticle Tool. Now we're gonna fill in these gaps between the vinyls with the other shades that make up the rainbow flag. You can think about it like an every other color stripe technique. First we did the even numbered colors and now we're doing the odd numbered colors to fill in the gaps. The key is to work very quickly on this step though and not let the polish dry or else the vinyl is actually harder to peel up and will give you uneven edges. I'm layering the yellow on a bit thicker because it is a lighter shade which needs a bit thicker of a coat for it to be truly opaque, but in general, these hollows work like a dream for this kind of nail art. I am impressing myself as I was doing this, and I'm not even trying to sell anything right now because we're all sold out and you can't buy them right now anyways. I know, I am sorry. We are working on a rainbow hollow restock, but it's probably going to be towards the end of the summer. And now quick, quick peel for the reveal. Quick little cleanup on aisle three. How freaking cool is that? Lines are so straight and even, but it was so easy, right? Like such a smart technique to do stripes like this with. Wow, I should watch my own videos more often. Maybe I'll learn something. And now we're gonna seal in this rainbow with a nice thick coat of glassy taco. And wow, look how amazing they are. I almost don't wanna make them American and I just wanna leave them as is. They look like candy nails or layered push pop flavors. Mm, delicious, but don't lick the rainbow. Okay, now it's time to make the corner of the flag, which last time I did navy blue but I think that kind of clashes with the linear hollows I have going on right now, so I'm gonna use one coat black instead. I just think it looks more aesthetically pleasing, and hey, also black lives matter. I'm using nail vinyls again to structure the corner of the flag, which is only possible because I'd previously added another glassy taco and had let it dry for an hour. Now we're gonna peel it off, and a quick little corrective surgery there. And now we are safe to proceed with the part I am least skilled at. Freehand painting. I always like to use acrylic paint for tiny paintbrush details because it's easiest to work with. But I have to be honest, one thing that hasn't improved in five years of Simply Neological content is my ability to paint tiny stars. I am struggling. I don't know why this is so difficult. You know, I thought I was a nail artist. Maybe it looks slightly better when you look at it from far away compared to how I did it five years ago. I don't know. Now we're gonna seal it all in again with a nice thick coat of glassy taco. And instead of being a smart ass, I will actually answer a question I get asked often, which is, aren't your nails way too thick after so many tacos or top coats? And the answer is, yeah, a little. But it actually feels good and solid in a way that prevents your nails from breaking because tacos, top coats, act like a splint on your nails. I think most people are nervous about multiple coats being too thick because they fear it won't dry properly, 
but I don't have that problem when I'm using my favorite holy grail glassy taco that dries and sets much better than any drugstore top coats. And there we have it. Reimagined American Pride nail art, but this time with a bit of a twist and using my own rainbow linear hollow polishes. I am so happy with how these turned out. I think they are super fun and easier than you think to do, the stripe part at least. And anyone who thinks these nails are an insult to American life or whatever can suck my glossy taco. Now it's time for you to vote who did it better, 2015 Simply or 2020 Simply? Comment down below. Well, what do you think? I think rainbows always look good, with or without the social commentary. All right, everybody, I hope you're doing well out there. Hope you're staying safe, social distancing, don't forget that. Stay alert, stay safe, wear your mask, stop, drop, and roll. You know the drill. And America, please get your shit together. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!